This is the fourth scene, which is the last one. It is mainly going to contain the logo of Star Channel. I had already prepared this logo in Adobe Illustrator. You can see that the texts are already converted into outlines. In the final scene, we will need to import this artwork into Blender, but in SVG format. In order to save this file as SVG, go to File, then Save As. Navigate to the location you want. On Save As type, select SVG. This little SVG options window will pop up. Leave everything the way they are, and just click on OK. Here in Blender, adjust the units as usual. On length, change it to be centimeters. Select everything then delete, for a fresh start. Go to File, then Save, navigate to the Blender Scenes folder. Save this file as, Scene 04. It's time to import the SVG logo. Go to File, Import, then Scalable Vector Graphics. Navigate to Resources folder, select an import. You can see the logo has separate curves. It has also been assigned this black material, which we don't need here. You can click here to remove the material. But if you want to delete any material in a given Blender file, go to the display mode of the outliner. Select Blender File. Expand Materials, now you can select and delete the materials you don't need. On display mode again, go back to, View Layer. If you enable wireframe, you can see how edges and faces are being displayed on this objects. Don't they look quite messy? Select, S, go to modifier properties, then add to it decimate modifier. Select, planar. Now you can see that the overcrowded edges have gone. Select the other objects first, then select the one with the decimate modifier last, go to this drop down, copy to selected. You can see that all the objects are cleaned up a bit. Select all these objects, right click, convert to, then mesh. Select all of them once more. Go to object, set origin, origin to center of mass. Move all the selected objects this way. Go to add, empty, then cube. Move the empty to, star channel logo collection. Scale the empty down this way. Control A, apply scale. Select these logo objects first, then select empty cube last, Control p set parent to object. Select the empty cube, bring in this side panel, rotate it by 90 degrees along the x-axis. Select, R, add a solidify modifier to it. Set thickness to be 5 cm. Select the other objects first, then select the one with the solidify modifier last, go to this drop down, copy to selected. For this star object, set the thickness to be 1 cm. Switch to front orthographic view, shift D to duplicate the star object, then scale it up this way. Control A, apply scale. On its solidify modifier, set thickness to be 10 cm. Switch to top orthographic view. Set local Z location of star object to be negative 5 cm. Turn off wireframe. Enable random color in viewport shading. Select R and S shade smooth. Then enable Auto Smooth.
Create a new collection, rename it to, Background. Add in a cube. On the dimensions, 300 cm on X, 5 cm on Y, and 450 cm on Z. Set Y location to be 15 cm. Bring this star object closer to the surface of the background cube. Select this cube, switch to top orthographic view. Shift D to duplicate, and set its Y location to be 25 cm. On dimensions, set 400 cm on X axis. Duplicate this cube once more. Set its Y location to be 35 cm. On dimensions, set 600 cm on X axis. Select all the background cubes, Ctrl A, then apply scale. Switch to shading workspace. First of all, we need to append materials. Go to File, then Append. Select Scene 01. Scroll down to Materials. Select Black Material, Metal 01, Red, and Text. Select this background cube, assign to it Black Material. Assign Black Material to other background cubes as well. Select this big star object. Assign it the red material. Select R, assign it metal 01 material. Create a second material slot, select red material. Go to modifier properties. On solidify modifier, expand materials and set rim value to 1. Select these objects first, then select R, last. Control L, link materials. Select other objects and set their rim offset value to be 1. On this star object, go to material properties. Select this red material, change it to be text material. Go to render properties. Check ambient occlusion, screen space reflections. Also expand shadows, check high bit depth, for later during lighting. Let me adjust these objects better. Switch to Front Orthographic View. Select, Star Channel Logo Collection. Go to Add, then Text. Press, R, X, then 90. On Alignment, set it to be center on both horizontal and vertical. Tab into Edit Mode, edit the text to read, Channel, in capital letters. As usual, our font is Arial Bold Italic. Set the size of the text to be 0.2. Grab and adjust its location this way, hold down shift for small adjustments. Switch to right orthographic view, adjust the text along the y-axis this way. Assign it the text material. Switch to Animation Workspace. On this left area, change Viewport Shading to Display Render Preview. Go to World Properties. On Color, change it to be Environment Texture. Click on Open, Navigate to Resources folder, select this HDRI image. Reduce Strength Value to 0.3. Go to Render Properties, Expand Film and check Transparent. It's now time for lighting. Create a new collection, rename it to, Lights and Camera. Go to Add, Light, then Area. 
Bring in this side panel. On location, set negative 170 cm on Y axis, and 280 cm on Z axis. Set power to be 300 watts, and increase size to be 500 cm. Expand shadows, check contact shadows. Shift D, to duplicate this light. Switch to right orthographic view. Set rotation on x-axis to be 90 degrees. On location, set negative 450 centimeters on y-axis, and 225 centimeters on z-axis. Change the shape of this light to be rectangle. On X, set it to be 1200 cm, and on Y, set it to be 300 cm. The shadows here are too dark, go to World Properties, make the strength of the HDRI to be 1. Switch to Front Orthographic View. It's time for animation. Select, Lights and Camera Collection. Go to Add, then Camera. Switch to Right Orthographic View, then pull out this camera on Y axis. On this left area, get into Camera View. Set the focal length of this camera to be 30mm. Go to Add, Empty, then Sphere. Duplicate the empty sphere, bring it up here along the z-axis, scale it down slightly, then apply scale. Select this big empty, rename it to, Empty Camera. Select the other empty, rename it to, Empty Main. Select Empty Camera first, then Empty Main last, Ctrl P, set Parent to Object. Select the camera first, then Empty Camera last, Control p set parent to object. On this left area, change display mode to be solid. Set this animation to only be 120 frames. Select empty camera. We shall animate its X rotation. Go to frame 1. On rotation, set it to be 90 degrees on X axis. Right-click, and insert single keyframe. Go to frame 20, set X rotation to be 10 degrees. Right-click, and insert single keyframe. These two keyframes, are for transitioning from the previous scene. Press, Control tab, to get into the graph editor. Click on Normalize. Select the two keyframes, press period key, select individual centers to be pivot points. Press S, X, then 1.5. Control tab, to enable the timeline, then offset these keyframes 10 frames back this way. Select empty main. For this one, we shall animate its Z rotation. Go to frame 1. Insert a single keyframe on Z-axis. Go to frame 80, set Z rotation to be 10 degrees, then insert a single keyframe. Select the camera. For this one, we are going to animate its Y location. Go to frame 1. Set Y location to be negative 200 centimeters, then insert a single keyframe. Go to frame 80, change Y location to negative 300 centimeters, and insert a single keyframe. Select this big star object. For this one, we will animate its local Z rotation. Go to frame 120, and insert a single keyframe on Z rotation. Go to frame 1, set Z rotation to be 20 degrees, and then insert a single keyframe. When big star object is still selected, go to timeline and switch into graph editor. 
Select this handle to ease. Press X to lock movement horizontally.